Let's get to, to this now because we've got breaking news out of Egypt. Here is a live look at Tahrir Square in Cairo. You've got security forces now saying that 650 people have been arrested during the clashes that left more than 50 people dead on Monday. The country's top Muslim cleric who backed the removal of President Morsi warns that Egypt, he believes, is headed towards civil war. Joined now by Lisa Daftari, she's a Middle East analyst and journalist and a Fox News contributor. And Judy Miller is a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter and author, also a Fox News contributor. Ralph Peters is a Fox News strategic analyst. What a team. Uh, thank you so much for all of you uh, being here. Judy, let me start with you uh, in terms of what you're learning about what's going on on the ground there. What's, what's happening? This is clearly a very tense moment. It's a moment in which the military feels that it has to assert its authority. It has to tell the Muslim Brotherhood that if they continue to resist what's happened, they will be killed, as what happened in the mosque uh, yesterday, or they will be arrested. The Muslim Brotherhood is a top-down organization, and the military is taking this step to prevent an all-out civil war. Yeah. Lisa, you know, we have talked about the different stages of revolution, and you had the toppling of Hosni Mubarak, and then you had this, what looks to be now, an interim Muslim Brotherhood government, which no doubt is scrapping to hang on to some control in this situation. So, you know, are we looking at a possible return to a Mubarak-style government where you've got the military backing their leader? It looks like the military is not going to be involved for uh, much longer than just restoring stability uh, to whatever government will now take the lead. And it seems as though the interim government is e extremely eager to remove the uh, Morsi-isms, if you will, uh, of the past year and to move on. And their approach has been extremely inclusive to bring in uh, the, the Islamists, to bring in the Muslim Brotherhood, to go forward knowing or believing that the only way to actually move forward and not have these protests brought up and to have the country be in perpetual revolutionary mode um, to, to, you know for months and maybe years to come they have to really include all these different constituencies and that's proving to be extremely difficult if not impossible yeah. Ralph uh, in terms of the US role here what is it uh, what indications do we have from the White House other than that we're sort of sitting back and, and looking and watching and, and assessing all of it should it be any more than that? Well, I think we need to get over our national narcissism, imagining that we can decisively influence events. We can play constructively on the margins of events throughout the Middle East if we do our homework, which we rarely do. Um, but if you look at Egypt and what's happening, it's going to be a long time, um, decades, before Egypt really can modernize itself socially, um, even spiritually. And you've got to be patient. But if, if I may make one point, Martha, the uh, shootings on Monday outside the military headquarters and near a mosque were absolutely a provocation by the Muslim Brotherhood. There is no advantage to the military in firing on civilians. The military doesn't want to do that. They were attacked, and when the military is attacked in Egypt or anywhere in the Middle East, they're going to respond in force. But I agree absolutely with what Lisa and Judy said. The military doesn't want to govern directly. It wants to protect its equities, mm -hmm. but it wants a civilian government as inclusive as possible. Is there any hope, Judy, as you look at this situation? Because, you know, when the Muslim Brotherhood ended up winning the election, you know, I think the world sat back and said, well, you know, they had an election and, and the Muslim Brotherhood won. And there was, you know, sort of an acceptance of that at that point. But then they went on to behave in a way that wasn't at all what they campaigned on. And, you know, cracking down on journalists, cracking down on Christians, uh, taking away the freedom of the press in the country, uh, it, you know, he, lots of surprises. Prizes. I guess they wouldn't weren't to, to, to everybody, but you know, not exactly what they campaigned on, as I said. So, where is there a possibility that a democracy, that a better alternative emerges for Egypt, and how likely is that? Well, I think that there is a possibility now because we have had this terrible experience in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood, and Egyptians have figured out that Islam is the solution, is just a slogan, and so now they're interested in the restoration of political stability in one hand 
around, and economic growth, which is why the appointment of Hassan Bablawi as, as prime minister mm -hmm. is so important. He's an economist. He's a pragmatic guy. He's inclusive. He's a man of principle. Egypt's economy needs to be restored. Right. They had 6 to 8 percent growth rate under Mubarak. They can do it again, but yeah. it's going to be a long haul. A very back. dismal economy under, under yes. Morsi. Just like 30 seconds each. Let me go to Lisa first. Are you hopeful or not for the future of Egypt? For in the long run, I, we, we should all be very hopeful because the people of Egypt are giving us the message. You know, if we didn't do our homework, if we're not knowledgeable, let the one take-home message here be that the people of Egypt have come out. They're letting the world know that they want freedoms. They want a healthy economy. They want to be able to have jobs, to have food on the table. And that's what this revolution is about. We can't import democracy. That's not what this is about. This is about really giving stability and first political stability so that that could lead to economic stability and that Egypt can go back to yeah. um, you know, being a strong country. For And that's in our interest as well. And we have to remember that and not cut the aid and allow right. them to nation build. Ralph? Well, I am hopeful for Egypt in the long term. In the short to midterm, it's going to be messy. But I'll tell you, you asked me what the U.S. should do. I'll take the U.S. should not do, should stop doing. Get over our cult of early or immediate elections. These societies, after centuries of oppression, need time to develop civic institutions, sense of social responsibility, the rule of law, an independent judiciary. Elections should come later because when you have elections at the start, before the country is ready, you get what happened in Iraq, Afghanistan, Tunisia, and Egypt. So elections right. are a tool of democracy. They're not democracy Interesting itself. Interesting point. There's, a, I guess, an uh, opportunity to sort of say, oh, uh, they had an election. So that's all, that's <laughs> yeah. all good to go. Uh, Ralph, thank you. Judy, thank Lisa, you. great thank to you. have you all here today.